Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to kind of make a broad video, kind of a broader version of some previous videos I made comparing head to head different career types and just kind of give you a high level overview of a few different careers that you can explore within the realm of data, the dataverse, as I like to say, um, with the aim of helping you decide, hey, maybe this is an area that I'm more interested in so that you can kind of make that decision earlier on um, and instead of wasting your time and, you know, a career that you thought would be really cool, but once you actually got into the nitty gritty of it, uh, you didn't actually like as much. Um, so that's what we'll be getting into today. Um, really just aiming to inform you about the different options you have, uh, some of the different career paths that, you know, they might lead you to, um, and really just give you uh, a better understanding of, hey, you know, where do these jobs take you both uh, skills wise, but also salary and career wise, you know, do you want to end up as a CDO? Do you want to end up as a CIO? Uh, different, you know, t different starting points as an analytics engineer or a data engineer or an ML engineer can get you to uh, different locations in the C-suite. Um, you know, there's always a path to C-suite, as I like to say. Um, so main ones I'm going to be kind of looking at as like the starter careers are the data scientist slash analyst role, a data engineer, uh, an ML engineer, artificial intelligence engineer, and then also um, analytics engineers. Uh, and then we will kind of use that. And also, I, you know, I'll throw in kind of generic business or financial analysts as well there um, too, uh, next to data scientist analyst. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk through each of these roles, tell you what they do, kind of just give you a brief overview of what their career could look like. Um, and hopefully you walk away with an understanding of what each of them uh, look like and what you actually wanna do. Uh, so without further ado, Let's get into it, starting off with uh, data scientists and data analysts. So here I have a nice little graphic that kind of shows you the career progression of a data scientist or data analyst. Um, and so just quick introduction to what a data scientist or analyst is. You're primarily concerned with extracting insights from data, applying statistical analysis, data visualization, and machine learning techniques to solve complex problems and inform decision making. Day-to-day -day responsibilities are going to look like collecting and cleaning data from many sources, performing exploratory data analysis, building, validating predictive models, and then you know, communicating any findings you have through reports and visualizations to the end business users. Um, and some of the pros of this role, high demand across various industries. It's almost every company will have some sort of data science or data analyst on staff. They have the opportunity to directly impact business decisions and strategies. And also, you know, you get the intellectual sal uh, satisfaction from solving complex problems that have a real world impact. Um, on the con side of things, really requires continuous learning to keep up with the evolving data landscape. And then it's also sometimes challenging to communicate, you know, your complex results that you've come up with to a non-technical stakeholder who doesn't really understand how to look at data like you might. Um, and so a typical kind of career progression for someone would be starting out as a, you know, an analyst, a business analyst role um, where they are, you know, doing kind of that more entry level analysis, generating reports, cleaning data, um, you know, building data visualization tables, building presentations, um, helping to build presentations for, you know, higher level data architects or, uh, you know, data scientist to actually be presenting, you know, kind of just doing the grunt work, as you say. Uh, business analysts, the distinction there will be, they'll be a little bit more focused um, and normally they're like in-house at a larger company, kind of analyzing, you know, certain pieces of business data to see internal optimization paths um, versus a data analyst might have a broader purview, typically always associated with helping the business, but might buy yeah, on less of an economic um, basis. The next level there is from moving up from an analyst is either kind of to a data scientist or a data architect, um, where you get a higher level understanding of you know how to build robust systems for actually doing data analytics. You know, not just relying on you manually tracking and cleaning data, but actually setting up things like data pipelines uh, to allow you to uh, automate some of these and create things like live updating dashboards. And then once you have enough experience or you join a small enough startup, you can become a chief data officer or chief data scientist. Um, and that's where, you know, maybe you're not doing as much as the hands-on keyboard work, but you're more thinking, all right, what are the areas we need to explore? Where can we apply our time and find these actual insights that's going to deliver, deliver the most value to the business? And then also taking, you know, that taking input from the business side uh, of the company and actually turning that into, all right, how do we use data to achieve these business objectives? Um, so that's kind of the typical career path uh, progression you might see for a data scientist or data analyst. So next we have the data engineer. Um, so data engineers are focused on the architecture, management, and scaling of data processes, building and maintaining that infrastructure that allows for large-scale data collection, storage, and analysis. Um, and their day-to-day -day responsibilities are designing and implementing database and storage solutions, 
ensuring data quality, efficiency of data flow, developing ETL processes, collaborating with those data scientists and analysts to actually provide them with reliable data sources. Uh, pros of this role are a central role in any data-driven organization. Um, you know, you got to ensure data availability, integrity at almost any company. Um, it's a high demand role and there are very definitely competitive salaries uh, paid to the best uh, data engineers. Um, and it's also a variety of different projects and technologies to work with. You can really choose to specialize or be a generalist and you know, work get to work with everything, um, but you have a lot of flexibility in the tools you can use. Uh, on the cons, requires a really strong understanding of both software engineering best practices and also you know, data-based management and can also involve with dealing with complex and sometimes tedious uh, data issues. Um, and your typical career progression here as a data scientist, you're gonna start out as a data engineer, uh, or sorry, as a data engineer. Um, then typically, you know, that'll just be, you're given data pipeline that needs to be produced by business, you have to go create it. Uh, then a senior data engineer might be actually managing like, hey, I'm going to take some uh, information from the business of what, or talk to the data scientists, figure out what they need, and then have my data engineers build this or, uh, manage my team and such would work with my team to create data sources that these data scientists or analysts can use. Uh, then you get to kind of the data architect level again, uh, similar to a data scientist where you're in charge of really building out the architecture and the infrastructure for an entire company. Um, and then that leads to enterprise data engineer, uh, where you're really overseeing the entire data organization. This is for large companies, setting architecture, setting policy, interfacing, you know, with many different teams to determine what their data needs are and how to best meet them. Um, and then that goes all the way to the CDO, which my body is blocking, but the S chief data officer, a lot of them, you know, they come up from the data engineers where you are in charge of managing the entire data of a company. You know, you're in charge of setting both, you know, pass for how do we want to collect more data, like maintaining existing pipelines, interpreting, again, business objectives into objectives for your data engineers to go uh, achieve. Um, and so this is, you know, very non hands on keyboard role, but it's all really all about, you know, being able to translate business needs into data projects. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the career progression for a data engineer. So next we have the ML and AI engineer. And for this one, I'm actually going to, I don't really have a graphic to show you the career path because it's such a new field that there isn't really yet a C-suite role uh, for ML or AI engineers. Typically, you know, they would go into that CDO path. We have seen some, you know, chief, companies that come out with a chief ML officer. But so I wanted to explore here is a different uh, kind of specializations you can take within the ML AI ecosystem. Um, but first, just overall, ML and AI engineers focus on designing, implementing, and deploying machine learning models and AI systems. Uh, and they work on the cutting edge of technology to develop those intelligent solutions that can learn and, and make decisions on their own. Day-to-day -day responsibilities include researching, implementing machine learning algorithms, AI solutions, training and tuning models to improve accuracy and performance, and then integrating AI capabilities into applications and systems. Uh, and they're going to be collaborating with data scientists and engineers to refine data pipelines for model training. Um, and some of the pros of this field are, you know, the opportunity to work on innovative and impactful projects, uh, high demand for skills in the burgeoning field of AI, and also the intellectual challenge and satisfaction of creating intelligent systems. You know, it's a quite a cool uh, industry to work in. Uh, on the con side, though, it does require a strong foundation in mathematics, statistics, and computer science. And keeping pace with the rapid advancement in AI technologies can be quite demanding. Um, it's just going to take a lot of investment of your time and energy to actually stay abreast of everything that's coming out. And then within the realm of AI, you know, there's a few different roles where you can kind of specialize in. Um, so number one, NLP, natural language processing engineer, focusing on sentiment analysis, things like that. You have the traditional ML engineer, you know, building business specific ML pipelines. AI research scientist, um, you know, this is more kind of staying on the cutting edge of what are the newest AI uh, tools that we can make use of? How can I explore, you know, using AI in new ways, innovative ways to actually help the business. You have robotics engineers, someone who wants to work with more of the hardware side of AI, um, you know, building things like factory robots. You have also a computer vision engineer. Um, so this is someone, you know, working with understanding, you know, someone like Tesla developing LIDAR systems so that robots can actually see and interpret the world around them. AI ethicists, uh, this is actually a big role in a lot of companies, uh, making sure that your AI is exhibiting ethical behavior uh, and, and focusing on that as a role. Uh, you also have an AI project manager or product manager where you're actually just kind of the you know, traditional product manager, but in charge of AI products. Um, then you also have an AI architect or strategist, and that's where, you know, you're developing the infrastructure and the framework for you to be able to uh, 
uh, deploy AI models and really uh, manage them at enterprise scale. Um, so those are kind of the uh, main different specialties, I would say, that exist within the uh, broader umbrella of ML and AI engineering. I kind of want to wrap this video up with, you know, both talking about analytics engineer and what their career path looks like, but I kind of realized that that is really an extension of a data analyst role. Typically, you'll go from being just a regular data analyst into a data uh, and an analyst engineer because you just naturally develop the skills you need to become an analytics engineer because you're like, wow, I need to get my own data. I don't want to be relying on a data uh, engineer to just be getting me everything. Um, but all I did want to finish is just kind of this uh, diagram of what a typical you know structure might look like at a company in terms of just data career paths. Uh, so number one at the bottom, you have you know your database developers, your data analysts, you can see uh, through the green screen of my shirt. Um, and that will roll up to you know business intelligence analysts, data engineers, um, database administrators. Uh, and then on the kind of left hand side, like parallel to the stack, you have data quality managers, uh, ethics officers, you know, think of them as an AI ethics officer, data governance managers. Um, they're working in parallel with these job functions to make sure you, know, you adhere to these principles they've set out. Um, and then you have at the kind of above the engineers and the uh, analysts is the data scientists and the data architects who are determining the structure that these data and the projects that these data engineers are working on, developing those higher level, uh, you know, diagrams and you know, strategies for achieving what the data strategist has come up with as the business objectives that they need to work on. Um, and these will typically be coming from the chief data officer and chief analytics officer who are being told by the CEO, the board, hey, we need to find a way to optimize our costs. Um, and so what then those C-suite users are going to do is say, is they're gonna work with the data strategist to figure out, hey, how do we take this business objective and how do we achieve it using data by building a new pipeline, by you know using a new ML model um, and really interpreting those, uh, you know, business, obje again, business objectives into data outcomes. Um, and that's just kind of, Really what I wanted to end on, just giving you a sense of the overall landscape here. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. I found it pretty enlightening in terms of the different uh, ways data careers can go. Um, but that is all I have for you today. Hope you have a good one. Data Guy out.